Number 6. Daniel Redlick In January of 2019, Michael Redlick, an executive for the University of Central Florida, was found dead at his Winter Park home. The emergency services were called by the man's stepdaughter turned wife, Danielle. The woman told officers that he'd likely succumbed to a heart attack, but they noticed that the scene was suspicious, with blood-soaked towels, mops soaked in blood, and a five-gallon bucket filled with pinkish water. There was also blood in a bathroom shower that was later confirmed as Michael's by DNA testing. The man had been married to Danielle's mother, Kathy, but those familiar with the circumstances reported that the marriage was more of a financial arrangement. The woman was dying of cancer, and he wanted her to have better medical coverage. Kathy passed away in 1999, and in the aftermath, Danielle and Michael, who was 20 years older than her, began a relationship. They were married for roughly 15 years and had two children together. Danielle was charged with second-degree murder as well as tampering with evidence. In connection to her husband's death, she admitted in court to fatally stabbing him but claimed to have done so in self-defense. As per her version of events, he'd seen flirtatious texts she'd exchanged with another man and became enraged. Michael pinned her against a kitchen island and started smothering her. Fearing for her life, Danielle stabbed him. The prosecution argued that she killed her spouse in cold blood because she no longer wanted to be in a relationship with him. Whatever the case might have been after the stabbing, Danielle waited 11 hours before calling 911. A jury eventually cleared her of murder but found her guilty of tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to 364 days in jail and 12 months of probation in addition to being ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. Number 5. Tara Newell In just 32 seconds, my life changed forever, is how Tara Newell described the killing of her stepfather, John Meehan, for People magazine. Tara's mother, Deborah, had met the man on an internet dating site in October of 2014. Within roughly a month, they moved into a house in Newport Beach, California. In spite of ongoing tension between the man and Deborah's daughters, Tara and Jacqueline, the couple got married in Las Vegas after only two months of dating. Unbeknownst to Deborah, Mian had a long history of conning, abusing, stalking, and manipulating women. His first wife, Tonya Sells, had helped put him through nursing school and only found out after 10 years of marriage that he'd lied about his birthday, full name, and previous drug charges. Deborah was blinded by her newfound love, but her family began to suspect that Mian, who was also a hardcore drug user, was hiding something. They hired a private detective who found out about his criminal past and the restraining orders against him from multiple women. In light of the information, Deborah tried to walk away from the relationship, but Mian convinced her to take him back as he always had a story to prove he hadn't been in the wrong. They moved into an apartment in Irvine, but in March of 2016, Deborah decided to cut him out of her life and moved to have the marriage annulled. The decision resulted in the man demanding money and sending her threatening messages with promises to ruin her life. He was caught on surveillance footage, stealing Deborah's Jaguar from outside her office in Irvine. The vehicle was found a block away covered in gasoline and with mild fire damage. Then, on August the 20th of 2016, Mian attacked 24-year-old Tara on the rooftop parking lot of her Newport Beach apartment building. The much larger man approached her from behind with a knife and tried to force her into his car. Tara fought back relentlessly, and after they'd wrestled on the ground, got hold of the knife. She stabbed Mian 13 times, including once through the eye. In the immediate aftermath, Tara called her mother to say, I'm really, really sorry. I think I killed your husband. The 57-year-old man did indeed succumb to his injuries four days later, but given his campaign of abuse against the Newell family and beyond, the law and public opinion were unanimously on Terra's side. The case of Dirty John, as the man had been nicknamed since college, became the subject of a true crime podcast and a Bravo series starring Eric Banner in the titular role. Number 4. Sabrina Zunik When she was in her early teens and attending Wycliffe High School in Ohio, Sabrina Zunik displayed a propensity for violence, often getting in fistfights. Zunik had been mainly raised by her paternal grandmother, as her parents were often in legal trouble and struggled with substance abuse. 
She was eventually sent to the Emma Cayley Receiving Home, a behavior modification center in Painesville. After bouncing from one foster family to another, Zunik was placed with Kevin and Lisa Noffel at their home in Willoughby Hills in the early 2010s. Lisa was a social worker in the abuse department of the Cuyahoga County Department of Children and Family Services, while her husband worked as a truck driver. The couple already had several daughters between them and expected Zunik to easily fit in. However, not long after the troubled teen was placed in their home, she and 42-year-old Kevin secretly began having intimate relations. Lisa became suspicious of them and expressed an intention of sending Zunik away, so they planned to murder her. On the night of November the 16th of 2012, while wearing a ski mask, Zunik attacked her foster mother in her bed. The 41-year-old woman fought back and one of her other teenage daughters, who'd heard the commotion, tried to intervene. But Zunik couldn't be stopped. She stabbed and cut Lisa more than 150 times with a 10-inch serrated knife. The police arrived at the home to find her drenched in blood, claiming she couldn't remember anything. Six months after the killing, partly because she'd felt abandoned by Kevin, Zunik told the authorities that they'd been sleeping together and revealed the full extent of the murder plot. She claimed that the man had manipulated her into killing his wife by threatening to take his own life. He'd also told the team they'd build a future together using the $750,000 from Lisa's life insurance and raise the man's young daughter. Kevin had also given the teenager instructions on how to carry out the killing and told her to feign memory loss upon its discovery. Zunik pleaded guilty to aggravated murder in August of 2014 and was sentenced to life with parole after 30 years. She testified against Kevin at his trial and he was given the same sentence after a jury found him guilty of conspiracy to commit aggravated murder. Number 3. Julianne Bander In early April of 2022, a San Antonio woman was arrested in connection to the fatal shooting of her stepfather outside of his West Side home. Local police found 49-year-old Carlos Chavez suffering from gunshot injuries on the sidewalk near the front gate of his residence on April the 21st of 2020. According to an affidavit, the man had been in front of the house when a silver car pulled up close to him. A passenger inside the vehicle shot Chavez multiple times and he later passed away in a local hospital. Investigators subsequently examined location data and text exchanges from the cell phone of Julie Ann Bander, the victim's stepdaughter. Messages between them revealed that Chavez was waiting for her outside while her phone was on location in the time frame that the crime was committed. Additionally, the owner of the silver car told the police that she'd loaned the vehicle to Bander and another man on the day of the shooting. Two years after the murder, the 28-year-old face tattooed stepdaughter was arrested and charged, but a reason for the shooting wasn't disclosed. Today's topic was requested by CK. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Ashley Martinson. Teenager Ashley Martinson gunned down her stepfather and shot her mother at the home they shared in Pyle, Wisconsin. On March the 7th of 2015, Thomas Ayers, aged 37, had a history of being verbally and physically abusive towards his wife, Jennifer, and Martinson. His aggressive behavior in the household reportedly extended to Martinson's two stepsisters and half-sister, who were younger. Thomas had passed convictions for assault, kidnapping, and domestic abuse. He was forbidden from owning firearms, but possessed several, which he kept loaded and accessible in the house. On the night of March the 6th, a heated argument erupted between Jennifer Thomas and Martinson when they found out that she'd been dating a 22-year-old man named Ryan Sisko. The following day, 17-year-old Martinson fatally shot Thomas with a shotgun and then stabbed Jennifer to death. She subsequently locked her younger siblings in the closet with a supply of food and drink before fleeing with Sisko to meet his relatives in Tennessee. Police were called to the scene on March the 8th by Martinson's eldest stepsister. The teen immediately became a suspect based on eyewitness reports from her step-siblings and the fact that she'd fled the scene. She and Sisko were captured in Boone County, Indiana. The man was only charged with a parole violation, but Martinson was arrested on two counts of first-degree intentional homicide and false imprisonment. The teen initially told investigators that her mother had killed Thomas 
and that she'd knifed her in self-defense, but then changed her story. She claimed to have taken one of her stepfather's guns to her room with the intention of ending her life. When Martinson heard him knock on the door, she decided to kill him, as she felt he deserved to die more. She began firing, hitting him in the neck and then shot him in the head, before stabbing Jennifer, who'd been alerted by the gunshots. Martinson initially tried the insanity plea before accepting a plea deal of second-degree murder that saw her sentenced to 23 years in prison. Number 1. JT On July the 23rd of 2015, a woman was stabbed to death by her preteen stepdaughter at her apartment in Elkhart, Indiana. The killer only identified as JT, set fire to the home before knifing 50-year-old Maria Torres, who died at the scene. After she was taken into custody, JT revealed that she had acted at the direction of a fictional clown called Laughing Jack, a character found on the creepy pasta website. Internet lore describes Laughing Jack as a character that befriends young people as their imaginary friend before killing them or forcing them to kill. Months before stabbing Torres, JT reported hearing voices, had developed an alter ego and begged her father for help. She was found unfit to stand trial after being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and disassociative identity order, also known as multiple personality disorder. As of the latest updates, she was held at the juvenile detention center in Goshen, where she wasn't allowed to have any sharp objects near her or in her reach, after being labeled a danger to herself and others. As noted by her public defender, Holly Curtis, JT had been failed by everyone, as 16 psychiatric facilities and the state had refused to take her. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be adopted by Kanye West or the Kardashians? Let us know in the comments section below.